I will now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's in attendance tonight and also those that are viewing the meeting on G10 television. We're going to, we're going to begin the meeting tonight. Uh, I'm going to have you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Jerome Willingham, followed by the invocation by our City Attorney, Mr. John Carter. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As always, we give thanks for your presence in our lives and for your blessings upon our city and upon our citizens. We pray that we may never take for granted all the blessings that you so graciously bestow upon us, but rather that we acknowledge them and use them in service to you and in service to our fellow citizens. We pray this evening for our service members serving here and around the world. And we also especially remember those wounded warriors who have served and are still carrying those wounds today. We pray for all of their families. We pray for, your, for our mayor and for our council that your guidance and direction as always would be with them. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, uh, Council, you have a, at your places uh, a copy of the agenda for tonight's meeting. There's going to be a couple of uh, amendments to this uh, agenda. Uh, we're going to take a couple of uh, uh, presentations A and B and move them to the March 3rd meeting due to the uh, weather that's situation we're having now and with that I would entertain a motion to adopt the amended agenda so moved second comments all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. all opposed next we have um, excuse me we have our first section uh, we have our first presentation for tonight and uh we're going to do some promotions and i'm going to come around front here I'm going to ask uh, Chief Spencer Lee and Chief Yunera if you want to join me up front. And also Jerry. I saw Jerry. There, there he is. Okay. <coughs> Operations <coughs> Chief Jerry Hardison. And we're going to, y'all going, we're going to promote three people. We're going to swear in three people tonight, right? I think I'm going to start here with Ethan Wooten. And his family. I, I know you might have some of your folks here that will join will join you up front. Ethan, how are you doing? Tell you what, I'm gonna let you uh, come. I'll let you and your wife come over here. That way you can face us all this way. How's that? Mm. You ready for this? Okay. Ethan began his career with the Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services on July 6, 2010 as a firefighter trainee. After promotion through the ranks of Firefighter 1 and 2, he was promoted to Driver 1 in January of 2013. Ethan holds uh, certifications in Firefighter 1 and 2, EMT, Hazmat Level 1, Inspector Level 1, AVD, driver operator pumps, driver operator aerial, and TRVMR. That may mean something to somebody that could interpret that for me. Um, he is a student in the fire protection technology program at Coastal Carolina Community College, and he's also scheduled to graduate in the spring of 2016. And I I'm going to administer the oath, and if you would place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand and repeat after me. 
I, Ethan Wooten, I, Ethan Wooten do, solemnly do solemnly swear that I will be alert and vigilant, alert and vigilant in performing my duties, performing my duties as, a driver as a driver to of the City of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. That I will not be influenced in any matter, on account of personal bias or prejudice. That I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States, and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and, execute discharge and execute the duties of my office, duties of my office. As, a driver to as a driver to of the city of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency <laughs> Services, according to the best of my skill, abilities, and judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations, Ethan. proud to uh, call on Jeremy Foster and anyone you want to bring forward with you hey Jeremy yeah he wants to move here how are you doing right. Jeremy uh, Jeremy began his public safety career with the Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services on July 24 2000 as a firefighter trainee he was promoted through the ranks of Firefighter 1 and 2 and was promoted to Driver 1 in August of 2004 and Driver Operator in December of 2007. Jeremy holds certifications as Firefighter 1 and 2, EMT, Hazmat Level 1, Instructor Level 2, uh, Fire Inspector 1, TR VMR, again, TR Ropes, uh, TR Water Rescue, EVD, Driver Operator Pumps, Driver Operator Aerial, USAR, uh, Fire Officer 2, Chief 101, Fire and, and Life Safety Educator 1, and Rescue Officer. He is a qualified instructor in Firefighter 1 and 2, Driver Operator, Hazmat and Technical Rescue. He holds an Associate's Degree from Coastal Carolina Community College in Fire protection technology and Jeremy is going to be promoted it's been promoted to driver from driver two to captain so he's going to be sworn in as a captain tonight so if you'll place your uh, left hand on the Bible and raise your right and repeat after me I Jeremy Foster, I, Jeremy Foster do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will be alert and vigilant, be alert and vigilant in performing my duties, performing my duties as a captain Okay. Of the city of Jacksonville, from the city of Jacksonville, fire and emergency services, fire and emergency services, that I will not be influenced, that I will not be influenced in any matter, in any matter, on account, on account, of personal bias or prejudice, of personal bias or prejudice, that I will support and maintain, I will support and maintain the Constitution, the Constitution, and laws of the United States, the laws of the United States. And the Constitution, and the Constitution, and laws of North Carolina, and laws of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith, not inconsistent therewith, and that I will faithfully, I will faithfully, and impartially, and impartially, discharge and execute, discharge and execute, the duties of my office, the duties of my office, as captain, as captain, of the city of Jacksonville, the city of Jacksonville, fire and emergency services, fire and emergency services. According to the best of my skill, 
the working of the law skill. Abilities. Abilities. And judgment. And judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Show real good to that white shirt if he gets stuck. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like he knew what he was doing there. Congratulations, Jerry. Okay, our last, uh, our last promotion to be sworn in tonight will be Amy Procopio. And I, think, I see you have most of your family, your family with you tonight. Okay. <laughs> How are you doing, Amy? Good to see you. Hello. Amy uh, began her career with the Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services on uh, February 14, 2000 as a firefighter trainee. Working her way up through Firefighter 1, 2, and 3 ranks, she was promoted to Driver Operator 1 in November of 2003. This was followed by promotions to Driver 2 in December 2005 and Captain in December of 2009. She was promoted to her current rank of platoon training officer in March of 2012. She holds certifications as a firefighter one and two, EMT, hazmat level one, general instructor two, fire inspector level one, TR, surface water and rescue, fire and life safety educator uh, one and two, EVD, driver operator aerials, TR, VMR, Chief 101, Fire Officer 1. And she also holds an associate's degree in fire protection technology from Coastal Carolina Community College and a bachelor's degree in fire and emergency services from Fayetteville State University. She is a member of the Honor Guard and the accreditation team and has been the water rescue team leader for three years. She and her husband, Mario, are the parents of three, one one's in, out there here, but not here, uh, Thomas, uh, are you Thomas? Molly, are you Molly? Nice to meet you. And Isabella, who's not in here. But we're gonna administer the oath now, and I'm gonna have you uh, place your uh, left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand and repeat after me, Amy. I, Amy Procopio. I, Amy Procopio. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will be alert and vigilant. That I will be alert and vigilant. In performing my duties. In performing my duties. As battalion chief. As battalion chief. Of the city of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. Of the city of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. That I will not be influenced in any matter. That I will not be influenced in any matter. On account of personal bias or prejudice on account of personal bias or prejudice that I will support and maintain that I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States the Constitution and laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina not inconsistent therewith not inconsistent therewith and I will faithfully and impartially and that I will faithfully and impartially Discharge and execute. Discharge and execute. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As battalion chief. As battalion chief. Of the city of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. Of the city of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. According to the best of my skill, abilities, and judgment. According to the best of my skills, abilities, and judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you.
Chief Lee informs me that you are the first uh, female firefighter to hold the uh, position as a battalion chief. Congratulations on that event also. Thank you. I bet you're proud of your mom, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. It always does my heart good to see uh, see these promotions, especially with people that are so diver uh, deserving. You know, they went through a grueling process, and I think they probably tell you that in order to get to the, the place where they're at now. And we're real proud of them uh, and the work that they do because over the last couple years, they've been really instrumental, uh, these three, in, in making the department a much better place to work and making our citizens safer. So thank you for that. Appreciate it, guys. Okay, we have our first section of public comment for the evening. Uh, I have one person signed up, Randy Gorham. If you'll come forward, please, to the podium. Yes, sir. State your name and address for the record, please. Randy Lee Gorham, 1146 of Planet Green Road. Uh, I've been having a problem with Paul Hardison for the longest and Mayor Phillips. I've been trying to get a report uh, that he's threatened me years ago, so I had a vest made up here that I showed 2013 to Mayor Phillips, and I got it on again tonight. And uh, then something just happened again, February the Quinn. Uh, last year, and I've been trying to get a police report from your police department, Mayor Phillips. I could never get a report. Went down there four or five times and got up to Deputy Chief Chater and um, kept talking to him. Third time I talked to him, he fussed me and my girlfriend out. He said, look, I checked into it. I done all I can do. Nothing to do about it. I had to speak to Turner Affairs. He did not even talk to Turner Affairs about the situation. And then, uh, I got ready to talk to the chief of police. I could never talk to the chief. And finally, I told the chief to call me back when I contacted Mr. Woodrow. And I guess somebody called him and told him to come back down and make a report. And we were scared to go back down there because the deputy chief trader treated us that day. And I let him know now where I turn to my fellow to get a report. I can't never get a report done, so I'll come to you again. You told me in 2013 that you will speak to me. You haven't spoke to me yet. I've been trying to get in touch with Mayor Phillip. You never return my call back and set up a meeting. So this incident occurred when, Mr. Gorham? February of last year. And I didn't know where do I turn to for help. Okay. This happened to your city limit. I was threatened by Jill Hardison in the courthouse. He cussed me out in the courthouse. I ran my face six inches from my face. I said that in 2013. Nobody never done nothing about it. Came to the police department again. Now he done assaulted me in the store in Dollar Tree. I have a report here, which I can never get to the police department because they wouldn't take a report because they're scared of jail hearts for some other reason. I don't know what it is. So now I'm coming to talk to you so you can take my report, sir. So when can I meet with you so you take my report? Well, I, don't, I don't take reports. So who do you want to take uh, the report? We can. Mr. Hardison called me yesterday. I called him back six times over a three-hour period. was not able to make contact with him for that. I'm certainly, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gorham. Uh, I apologize for the fact you and I did not make contact. It is my understanding that the chief of police has talked to you about the fact that they could not find a report filed. Be happy to discuss with, with you this out in the council chamber, out in the uh, forum of the, of the auditorium, if you'd like, in just a moment. I think what Mr. Gorham is saying, that there never was a, a report. No, Sir? you never were able to file a report. Is that correct? No, they would never take one. Okay, that's why the chief could never find one. I had to speak to the chief. Um, 
since he came back on vacation, they keep telling me he's not in, he's not in, and never turned my phone call about three weeks ago. We'll be happy to okay. meet with him. Have, just have somebody from the staff to talk with Mr. Gorham outside. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gorham. Okay, this time I'm going to pause. I know some of you came specifically for the presentations tonight, so now's your chance to run away and go home to your nice warm home and leave us here to do the, uh, city's, the rest of the city's business for the night. Thank you all for coming, uh, and congratulations again to those of you who were promoted tonight. Uh, it's, it's really a thrilling, uh, a thrilling event to be able to see you guys move and gals move up in the uh, organization. Thank you. Big John, what's up? John, how are you? Hey, John, how are you? myself so there's no <laughs> let's make some laws let's go ahead and uh, go back into session with our business here um, and this time I would entertain a motion to adopt the consent items and the minutes from the January 20th, 2015, February 3rd, 2015 special meetings and the February 3rd, 2015 regular meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. And that brings us down to our uh, item number four, and this is going to be a... Um, reappointment uh, a planning advisory board reappointment and I'm gonna have to bring my screen back up here again um, 
In this way, you have uh, the planning board consist of nine authorized members, eight from the city, one from ETJ, three of the members or three of the city appoint, appointments, excuse me, are reserved for a representative from each of the following advisory committees, environmental and appearance and recreation and parks and water and sewer. We have, um, how many openings were there? Just the one? Yes. Okay, just one opening uh, for appointment and from what committee was that from? Environmental and appearance. Environmental and appearance. We actually have two. Uh, we have a, one of them's an ETJ. We have okay. on the county. On right. The county. Okay. So we're going to uh, we're going to make one appointment tonight, and at this time I will uh, re defer to Council Member uh, Bob Warden since he is the liaison to the Planning Board to uh, recommend any nominations. Uh, I recommend uh, and nominate uh, Suzanne Nelson for a reappointment for. Uh, uh, term expiring June 30th of this year for uh, represent and also to represent the environmental appearance committee Second any other nominations Mayor Fultz I move that the nominations be closed and the nominee accepted by acclamation uh, Second no, we have a second Okay, we have a motion and a second is there uh, any uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Next item, we have a Board of Adjustment appointment. Um, this is one vacancy on the Board of Adjustment uh, in, due to the passing of uh, uh, Mr. Herb DeVusser, who has served a long time on the board. Um, Council Member Jerry Bittner is the liaison to the uh, Board of Adjustment, and I will defer to you now, Mr. Bittner, for a nomination. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, I know our thoughts and prayers go out to the DeVusser family uh, for his overall community service as well as serving on the Board of Adjustment. I would like to appoint to fulfill the term which will expire June 30th, 2015, Ms. Ursula Kuno Buckner. Okay. Now, is there... Okay, so that's the only nominee? Yes, yes, right. sir. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any other nominations? All right. Move that nominations be closed and that the nominee be appointed by acclamation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is there uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the motion carries. Ms. Kuno Buckner is the new appoint appointed member. All right, that brings us to our last section of public comment for the evening. Uh, does anyone want to speak that may not sign the sheet? Okay, I don't see anybody uh, with their hand up. So now uh, we'll go to the report section, and I think I'll start with Mr. Willingham. No report. Mr. Bedner? Just the fact that the Onwasa meeting is scheduled for Thursday has been canceled due to the weather. Okay. Uh, That's it. Mayor Pro Tem Lazaro? No, no report. Ms. Washington? No, sir. Mr. Thomas? Uh, no report. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Warden? Proud to be here, but no report. I'm, I'm proud that you're here. Happy to be here. Dr. Woodruff, uh, your, your report, sir. members of council due to weather tomorrow we're going to run an abbreviated schedule relative to the recreation before school program at Newbridge Middle and Carolina Forest we will begin that program at 7 30 a.m. we will still run the after school program as normal also the city had scheduled a nonprofits executive roundtable that was going to be at Coastal Carolina Community College at noon that has been uh, canceled as a result of the key speaker not being able to travel from Raleigh. Beyond that, uh, I would like to report that the chief did meet as requested with Mr. Gorham. That matter is being taken care of. As always, we appreciate the leadership you and the council are providing. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mr. Carter. The manager's not quite through me. Oh, sorry. The city attorney has given me legal advice that I have. <coughs> Today we did convert over to the 800 megahertz system. We have several pictures that we'd like to show you of that.
this system is a joint effort of the city council and the county commission it is something that will benefit all of the citizens of Onslow County and we are very appreciative of the cooperation that the county commission and the city council have had in this roughly 13 million dollar investment it will enable all security personnel whether they're firefighters whether they're military police or whether they're uh, police officers sheriff's deputies to better communicate throughout the entire city <coughs> with that we will skip the videos that were scheduled and we will turn it back over to the city attorney following council's lead and their report I didn't mean to cut you off I thought you had hit a pause there we're done um, okay with that council I would entertain a motion to adjourn so moved second all in favor aye, aye.